In this video, I'm going to simplify what leaky gut is, why it's so important, why you need to understand it, especially if you suffer from chronic health issues. So if you look at the most commonly searched health terms over the last five, 10 years, leaky gut would be at or near the top. But it's far from just a buzzword. It's actually a very serious problem that in my opinion is leading to almost all chronic health disease. Now, when I say leading to, there's things that cause the leaky gut that are actually at the deeper level, but leaky gut itself is behind virtually everything. So let's look at what it is and why it matters. So the lining of our gut, think of the, the whole gastrointestinal tract, is actually only one cell thick on the walls on either side. And then we have our microbiome, our collection of bacteria and everything else in the gut that acts as another barrier. So the best analogy that I think works for this is think back in the old days when you had a castle that was on top of a hill that was well built with a very strong moat around it you were almost impenetrable. So why does this analogy match? Well, the castle wall is like our gut lining and the moat is our microbiome. So think about what happened back before we had technology and guns and everything else. If you had this strong castle up high, good moat around it, anyone who tried to attack you, you had the height advantage. You could just pick off the attackers with bow and arrow. If they tried to put a ladder up over the moat and up to the wall, you could just push it back over. It was relatively easy to defend unless you were just completely overwhelmed, which would be hard to do back then. So now what happens if that moat dried up? You still have a strong castle wall, but you've just lost a lot of the defense. Well, that's your microbiome. If you have poor microbiome health, now think of it like your moat is dried up. So now we don't have that extra layer of protection. Now we only have the one cell thickness of the wall. Now in our gut, there is actually meant to be tiny little holes in between each cell, that's called our tight junctions. And our body produces things like zonulin and actin to tell those cells to open a little bit and close a little bit to make those junctions wider or smaller or tighter to only allow certain things to come through. Where we have a problem is when those tight junctions get too big. So again, let's go back to our castle. So our moat is dried up, but if we still have a strong castle wall, we're okay. But now imagine you have holes in the wall. Now you have to send your troops to defend those holes where attackers can keep trying to run through. They can use wooden logs or whatever they had back then to keep trying to break through the wall. Hey, Dr. Rodney here. If you wanna get my free PDF, Five Hacks for Boosting Your Immune System, just go into the description of this video, click on the link, download it. And if you have any questions on it, just send me a message and I'll help you out with it and eventually you're probably going to have infiltration where some of these attackers actually get through the castle walls and inside. Well, this is again what happens with leaky gut. We get these tight junctions become so open because our cells shrink due to things like lectins and glyphosate and all these other toxins and parasites and a whole range of different things. And now we have these big open holes where all sorts of foods and particles and toxins are passing into our bloodstream that normally in a very healthy gut would get moved down the line and would be excreted in our stools without creating problems. So now what happens? In our castle analogy, our defenders eventually get tired. They can't keep defending all day every day as attackers keep coming. Well, in our gut, that, so our immune system is now on red alert. It's constantly having to attack all these foreign objects that are coming in and it gets overworked that leads to this autoimmunity where it becomes hypersensitive and now it attacks everyone that comes in. So now imagine in our castle analogy, there's no attackers coming, but we've sent some hunters and gatherers out to get food, water, whatever, and they come back in and they're getting attacked by the castle guards. And they're saying, no, 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 same team, same team. Well, that's what starts happening in basically leaky gut and autoimmunity. Our own immune system now starts attacking our own cells because it's so hypersensitive. So now we get two problems. We get this autoimmunity effect happening where our body's attacking itself, our thyroid then gets involved. This is why so many people now get told they've got Hashimoto's or Graves' disease or all these other thyroid problems. 99% of the time they don't have a thyroid problem. They have a thyroid that's reacting to autoimmunity that's happening because of leaky gut. So if we can solve why we're getting leaky gut, you'll solve the thyroid problem. But then we also get a whole host of inflammation because of everything that's coming in through the gut. So that's why leaky gut matters so much because once that happens, all sorts of chronic health issues are gonna to start to play up and occur. 
And that's why in my opinion, all chronic health sufferers need to start with the gut and go and look at how much leaky gut damage is there. Start healing that through diet, especially things like bone broth because of the collagen and glycine and stop adding things that are gonna stir it up more. But then we have to go one layer deeper and go, well, what's driving this in the first place? Is it parasite infection? Do you have a Bartonella or other Lyme style infection? Have you got mold toxicity? Are you overloaded with toxins because you're positive MTHFR and your liver's blocked up and you can't move it through? Something of that nature is driving everything to begin with. So treatment is a twofold thing. We have to remove or eliminate that problem while also healing the gut. I have found in my 20 years working in the health field, when you do those two things, you'll almost solve basically any chronic health issue. There's certain things that are terminal or genetic that you can't stop, but you can often even slow down progression of some of those things just by taking care of these two base things. Get these foundations right, you can solve a lot of health issues. So if you're a chronic health sufferer and you're stuck with this kind of stuff, the first thing I want you to do is hit the subscribe button because most of my videos are for people like you, trying to help you solve these chronic health issues when you're running into a brick wall. Then the next thing to do is if you are stuck and you need fresh eyes on your case, go into the description below, click on my discovery call link and let's get on a call and chat and see if we can solve the issues.